Greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the book of Romans, turning our Bibles to Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. His burden for his own people is so exuberant. Even after knowing that they are hard-hearted people, seeped into self-righteousness, given into their own religious accomplishments, trying to prove that they are superior because of their covenants, because of the patriarchs, and because of so many other things that the Lord did to them. And they were so seeped into dead religion, when there is no hope, everybody would easily give up on them. That's the time Apostle Paul says, there are two things. One, the desire of my heart. Two, a prayer to God. He had a desire. But when you see on the outside, it was impossible for this desire to be fulfilled. Because these Israelites were totally, absolutely given in to their own righteousness. But Apostle Paul went through this valley of the shadow of death personally. He went through that shadow of the death of self-righteousness. And he knew that when Jesus met him, the shackles of self-righteousness, the filthy rags of self-righteousness, and uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the prison of self-righteousness was broken. And he had now come into the righteousness of God. And he recognized that what God did for him, he could and he would do for everybody who came to him. And that's why he just didn't stop with a passive desire in his heart. He fused it with a prayer to God. How many desires we have that are God-exalting desires, that are kingdom-building desires. And yet, we don't pray for them. Just because you desire something passively, your desire has no strength to accomplish something. Apostle Paul brought his heart's desire to be fused with the benevolence and the providence of God. And the bridge was, he depended on God's mercy. Because it was that mercy that changed him. He knew that it, was, it would be the same mercy that would change them. He knew that he did not seek Christ, but Christ sought him. And he asked the Lord, beseeched him. He, he interceded unceasingly, supplicating for the children of Israel, saying, O oh Lord, what mercy I received, show it unto my people. Many a times... We have great desires, but we are not moved to pray continuously because we are so lopsided and have a very shallow understanding of what we've received from the Lord. If you really understand what you received from the Lord, you cannot help praying for others. In the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, you see, that even that rich man had a burden for his perishing brothers. You see, that the Samaritan woman of the well had burden for the perishing Samaritans. Because they understood how the Lord had pulled them out. They understood to where the Lord had pulled them out. If you really understand salvation... The true, deep, profound understanding of salvation and burden for those who are unsaved and an unceasing prayer for the salvation of the Gentiles are inseparable. If you don't see a burden for perishing people, you have somewhere shallowed the understanding of a lofty salvation. Loving, living, gracious Father, praise and thank you. For Apostles Paul, 
false desire and also prayer many a times because we have underestimated looked very low upon your salvation tried to play with our selfishness forgive us help us to understand the loftiness of salvation a burden for souls can never be separated In jesus name we pray amen Thank you.